हेलो माय नेम इज सोनाली वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ अराउंड द वर्ल्ड टुडे द इंडो पैसिफिक हैज बिकम इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम ट्रेड एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट टू कनेक्टिविटी क्लाइमेट एक्शन एंड सिक्योरिटी द इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस इज दैट एवरी वन फ्रॉम इंडिया टू अमेरिका एंड यूरोप is playing their respective roles to keep the Indo-Pacific regional system open and rule based in such a situation america is playing its bets to counter china's growing claims in this region in this context america is trying to put pressure on china by increasing its closeness with south korea amidst all this recently the 55th scm that is security consultative meeting was held between america and south korea The US Defense Secretary Lloyd J Austin and Shin Won Sik, Minister of National Defense of the Republic of Korea, attended the meeting with their respective delegations. In such a situation, the question arises that what effect will the closeness of America and South Korea have on the global arena? Given the growing importance of the Indo-Pacific, is America trying to encircle China? Will this increase China's problems? Apart from this, the question is whether China will be successful in stopping America's efforts. In today's discussion, we will find answers to such questions. South Korea, a country located in East Asia, occupying the southern half of the Korean Peninsula, known as the land of morning calm. This country is bordered by China in the west, Japan in the east, and North Korea in the north. The country's capital Seoul has established itself as the second largest metropolitan area in the world and a major global city. On the other side is the superpower America. The seeds of friendship between these two countries germinated in the 19th century when like other parts of Asia, America's interest in the Korean Peninsula was focused on development to serve its commercial interest. The United States established its first political and economic relations with Korea in 1882 with the Treaty of Amity and Commerce. The treaty granted most favored nation status in trade, requiring each party to open the market to the other at the highest level that the other country offered. Along with this under the mutual agreement, a provision for mutual defense in case of attack on America or Korea was also included. However, before the Treaty of Amity and Commerce with the United States, Korea was largely isolationist in its international orientation, often referred to as the Hermit Kingdom. The experience of Japanese colonization and the need for economic development provided it with the opportunity to emerge on the international stage. If we look at the history, it is known that Korea has been a victim of invasion by China and Japan. In such a situation, Korea hoped that America would help in eliminating any regional ambitions of China, Japan, or Russia. But by increasing its closeness with South Korea, America is trying to encircle China in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, in such a situation, many meanings of this meeting held between South Korea and America came to the fore. In fact, during this talk, both the countries have shared a defense vision. showing a glimpse of mutual agreement through the defense vision both sides have presented three key pillars for alliance cooperation for the next 30 years this includes enhancing extended deterrence efforts against the democratic people's republic of korea modernizing alliance capabilities by evolving into a science and technology alliance and strengthening solidarity and regional security cooperation with like minded partners According to experts this regional security here means providing security to South Korea from China and North Korea since their mutual disputes are not hidden from anyone America is busy serving its own interest through their mutual discord for this America has also assured cooperation to Seoul in the field of space technology and cyber security However during this period America has given priority status to the defense of this region stating the importance of the Indo-Pacific region In fact China is showing an eye to America by increasing its influence in the Asia Pacific region through the Belt Road program and by continuously expanding its jurisdiction in the South China Sea 
On the other hand, America is using its neighboring countries to counter China's dominance. This was the reason that America took steps to bring about reconciliation between South Korea and Japan, as a result of which for the first time in the last 12 years, the feet of the South Korean president fell on Japanese soil. According to global political experts, America wants to end the differences between Japan and South Korea so that both the countries can together face China and North Korea. A recent example of this was seen when the meeting of foreign ministers of G20 countries was held in Delhi and the foreign minister of Japan did not attend it. Seeing this attitude of Japan, South Korea announced that its deputy foreign minister would go to this meeting. That is, both South Korea and Japan sent junior ministers to India instead of their foreign ministers. But when the meeting of Quad countries took place, on the invitation of America, the foreign minister of Japan came to India to join. It is worth noting here that Quad is called an anti-China grouping, which includes India, Australia, Japan and America. And these efforts of America are also seen as a strategy to stop the growing dominance of China. Amidst all this, if we talk about the bilateral relations between America and South Korea, if we look at the pages of history, it appears that in the last 60 years, trade and investment has given a new direction to the relations between America and South Korea. According to statistics in 2012, trade in goods and services between South Korea and the United States was approximately $134 billion, making it the seventh largest trading partner of the United States. But with economic progress, the tension between the two countries also increased. According to media reports, when South Korea took step towards the production of high-value products like automobiles in the 1980s, America became worried. However, South Korea kept its market closed to imports to help develop its domestic industries. But as South Korea developed economically, it began to compete more directly with American products due to which the gap of economic disputes between the two countries seemed to be deepening. Because even today, America considers the Asian Tigers countries as its rivals at the trade level. The Asian Tigers group of countries includes the high-growth economies of Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan. All four economies have been driven by exports and rapid industrialization and have achieved high levels of economic growth since the 1960s. It is worth noting here that all these countries are geographically close to China, but at the diplomatic level, their inclination seems to be towards America. However, China keeps a close eye on every step of its rivals, while on one hand, America is inclined towards South Korea. On the other hand, China shows its friendship with North Korea. But South Korea's increasing friendship with America can put China in trouble in many ways. Obviously, America is directly competing with China through South Korea. Beyond diplomatic equations, if we look at economic fronts, America has developed an important economic relationship with South Korea. This relationship has evolved into a comprehensive economic partnership that is helping to shape global standards and norms for economic relations in the Asia-Pacific and through the G20. So that's all in today's episode. See you in the next episode. But before that, let's note down a question based on today's story. Throw light on the relations between America and South Korea in the changing geopolitical environment.